Hello everyone, welcome to Mystery Mondays. Um, I have got to find my right page. I should have done that before I started, huh? And still not my right page. <laughs> um, so sorry about that, but welcome to Mystery Mondays. Today I'm discussing two cases um, of missing persons. One is very recent, which is the case of Jason Lyrell. I believe that's the proper way to pronounce his last name. I don't know. I had asked for clarification on that and was contacted by someone who's a liaison for the family, and then she never called me once I gave her my cell phone number. So anyway, that being said, I'm pretty sure that's how you pronounce his name. Um, he went missing in Northwest Arkansas this past January. The other is the case of Michael F Fissery. I started to say Fissery. I thought it was pronounced Fissery. Apparently, it's pronounced Fissery per his sister, who has the same last name. Um, he has been missing in Yosemite National Park since June the 21st of 2005, and I'll elaborate more on that here in a little bit. His is a cold case within a United States National Park. I'm starting with his case since it is older and for now I will only be telling the basics um, pretty much about Jason's case as I want to make sure the information I give is accurate and I was hoping to um, find out whether I could get some permission to discuss certain aspects of his case from the family and as I said the liaison like she sent me a poster that had a bunch of missing people on it and that was pretty much all she ever did but anyway um, she was wanting to talk to me and I told her a day that would be good for her to talk to me and then I asked her I messaged her my cell phone number and asked her to text me um on my cell phone if she could so that way I would have her number because if someone calls me from a number that I do not know I don't answer it if you leave me a voicemail yeah I'll call you back but if you don't, then it's just, your call's not going to be, ever be answered. So anyway, that's just how it is. Um, so back to Michael Fissery. Um, Michael was 51 when he went missing in 2005. Um, I saw a thing that had his current age. Let's see, 2005 would have been 17 years ago. No. Yeah, I think, yeah, 17 years ago. Um, so yeah, he'd be 68. That's what I was thinking that I saw. He is a white male. Um, he was a white male who was 5 foot 10 inches tall, weighed about 165 pounds. He had gray shoulder length hair, a gray beard and mustache, and wore eyeglasses. I was trying to tell to me they looked like they were wire framed. But I thought that I saw something somewhere else that said that they had a brown plastic frame, but I couldn't find that article when I was looking up the information um, to research this. He was last seen wearing a faded blue or blue-gray t-shirt, olive green or khaki shorts, and a faded red or pink scarf. It's okay. forgot he was blaring his music. I did state fairly loudly that I was going to go ahead and make my video, but anyway, <laughs> um, it's what happens when you live with other people that don't always know, and you don't always know what each other is doing. Um, so, Michael was reported to have been hiking in the Teal Teal Valley area of Yosemite National Park. The valley, not the mountain. He was uh, his plan was to report, to report, his plan reportedly was to hike um, by himself in the Tiltil Valley area of Yosemite National Park, northeast of the Hetch Hetchy Reservoir. His t-shirt had torn off sleeves, that was a, a fad, big huge fad back in the 80s, possibly even the 70s, um, tear off or cut the sleeves off of your t-shirts. I know a lot of people still do that, um, but yeah, his t-shirt had torn off sleeves and his scarf was also torn. He was last seen on June the 15th of 2005 and was reported missing on June 21st, 2005 when his family notified the park service that he hadn't returned from his trip. 
His wilderness permit expired on June 19th of 2005. So that's when the family was expecting him to be home. It was on the 19th. And um, they waited until the 21st and were like, okay, he's like, something's definitely wrong. And then they called and um, contacted the park service. When last seen, he was hiking alone near the Hetch Hetchy Reservoir on a trail that went around the north end of the reservoir, but changed his mind and went up the Pacific Crest Trail instead. Um, so that's probably what led him to the mountain, because he went up this trail instead of um, going around to the north end of the reservoir like he had started to do. Um... So I'm guessing that that went up toward the mountain, and that's what um, that's when he diverted from his planned hiking trail. Just my opinion on that. Um, his family was concerned about him, as I said, when he didn't return the day his permit expired, and um, the thing about him being last seen on June 15th, but being reported missing on the 21st, um, was what I was talking about when I said I would elaborate more <clears throat> on him going missing on June the 21st. Generally, these, um, the last date that someone heard from or saw the person is sometimes the date that they put for them being missing, and other times, it's the date that the report was made. In the national parks, it's often the date that the report was made or that a search began for the person. <clears throat> that being said, on June 21st, 2005, the Park Service initiated a search for Michael, and it's my understanding that there were several searches that were done, of course, using the dogs, the helicopters, and Park Service members and volunteers, different search and rescue agencies and groups in, from across the country, I'm sure. His backpack was found by searchers near Till Till Mountain, just off, just off of the trail. This location, as I mentioned a while ago, was not along his planned route and was on, quote, extremely rugged and hazardous, end quote, terrain. A bottle of water camera and topographic map along with possibly other items because one of the things said several items were missing from his backpack and um, that those three items especially were missing from his backpack. Searchers found no sign of Michael in the area. He, like many others who go missing in United States National Parks, was considered an experienced hiker and backpacker. It is believed he became lost or injured within the park. I feel the people who are reported missing in our national parks often step away from the trails to get pictures of some really neat things they see off trail and either lose their way back or get injured somehow. Um, you know, you're walking on a trail and you see a deer next to a mountain lion and you're like oh that's cool they're not even trying to eat each other or whatever I want to get a picture of that or you see a rock that's covered in moss that makes the shape of Abraham Lincoln's face or something and you're like oh that's really neat I want to go get a picture of that so you run away from the trail to go and take these pictures and um, see other stuff deeper within the woods maybe and then it's like crap how do I get back you know um also it's easy to slip trip or accidentally slide down a ravine hidden by bush, a bush by brush. Um, the brush covers the ravine and you can't necessarily tell that it's there or you just step on a rock that's loose or a tree limb that's loose and it rolls and you go down the hill and you get injured, um, which is not good, but that happens a lot of the time. If you have any information on Michael's whereabouts or what may have happened to him, contact the National Park Service Investigative Services Branch via their tip line or email address. Um, their tip line number is 888-653-0008. And their email is nps underscore isb at nps.gov. 
This information will be listed in the description section of this blog along with other important information. And now for Jason's case. <clears throat> the information I've decided to um, give you guys concerning it. And I have decided I'm going to try to go back and do this on all of my Mystery Monday blogs that are about missing persons. I do not have the editing um, knowledge. <laughs> I, I, I will just be honest. I don't have the editing not, knowledge, knowledge to put the posters or pictures of the people that I'm talking about into my videos. I wish that I did. And I was hoping to get some help on that. As I mentioned the other day, um, quite some time back, like a year ago, I believe it was, but um, no one has stepped forward to try and help me with, with that, and I just, I don't know how to do it. So I am going to try to go back and do it to the others. This one, um, shortly after I post it, I'm going to attach at least two posters about Jason and the um, National Park official poster and possibly the uh, NamUs connection about Michael Fissery into the comments so that way people can see um, the pictures of these people since I can't put them on my blog, um, not being technically savvy enough to be able to do that. Um, I guess I should go ahead and hurry and do this though because I just realized what time it is. <laughs> my grandson might be here um, within about 20-ish minutes. So in order to try and avoid putting any incorrect information out concerning his case, I have elected to only include the basics, but mention four, I was thinking there were three, but there's four, four different places. Well, technically I think I mentioned five, but um, four different places he was known to have gone or believed to have gone to around the time of his disappearance. Jason Richard J. Laurel was 41 years old when he was last seen on January 25, 2022. And from what I understand, he was not actually seen then, but he was texting with his sister, Sarah. Um, and he did turn 42 on St. Patrick's Day. Um, so now he's 42 years old. He lives in Fayetteville, Arkansas, where his car was found at the Northwest Arkansas Mall. It has been reported that his car keys were found at another undisclosed location. He also has a motorcycle, which was left at a store in Clifty, Arkansas. Now, most of the posters and such, um, you will find if you look his story up, say that his motorcycle was left at a residence in Clifty, Arkansas. But from what I have seen on his missing page on Facebook, um, the lady who call, who had called and spoke with his sister and told his sister she needed to call police and let them know that he was missing works at a store and said that his motorcycle had been there for a few days or a couple of days or something like that. And she had contacted his sister to um, find, let her know that his motorcycle was still there. So... I don't think it was at a residence. I think it was at the store. Anyway, um, per that page, his, his family now has his motorcycle as well as his car in their possession. Jay has brown hair and blue eyes. He weighs about 160 to 170 pounds and is about 5 foot 6 to 5 foot 7 inches tall. He was last seen wearing blue jeans, a white t-shirt, tan combat boots, and possibly a flannel shirt of unknown color. Um, some reports say he was last seen in Huntsville, Arkansas on January the 21st of 2022. Others say Fayetteville, Arkansas on 125, 2022, allegedly walking away from some friends' home. I don't believe a time is mentioned on any of the reports I've seen. And also per the Facebook page, um, there was a woman who I guess lives in Fayetteville. I thought that she lived in Clifty, but there's a woman who lived in Fayetteville who had told police that he had walked away from her house, the home she shares with a couple of other people, which I guess, as I said, is in Fayetteville, but I thought it was in 
Clifty, but anyway, um, that she apparently had told them that he had walked away from her house on January the 25th. 2022 is where they get the 25th date from and the Fayetteville, Arkansas location instead of the 21st in Huntsville. Um, so, that being said, Jay does have two tattoos reported. Okay, so this is per one of the posters that I, that I saw, right? Um, that I will be sharing and you will see that they say different things concerning his tattoos. But I believe the other one instead of this one. But um, Jay does have two tattoos reportedly per this one poster, both on his right forearm. Um, on his lower right forearm, he has the word cross with the date 1-11-12 below it. And on his upper right forearm, now this is per this one poster, he has a tattoo of a cross, which is essentially, I'm um, looking at the picture of it, it's essentially four black triangles pointing in toward each other to form a cross. And there's a name for that type of cross, but I cannot think of what it's called. It might be the combat cross, actually. Um, he was a Marine, I believe someone said. So his cell phone last pinged in Madison County, Arkansas in Clifty on January 27th of 2022. His cell phone has not been located yet, and this past Saturday, volunteers searched several acres in the area where it had last pinged. Now, there have also been at least two, possibly three other searches for him, led by the Madison County Sheriff's Office and the Huntsville Police, and Madison County Search and Rescue, I believe, was involved in those searches. The one that was done this past Saturday was a volunteer um, search that was set up by the family, and they had the permission of the police to search the area from what their poster said. Many of Jason's belongings have been found in various locations, of course, including his car, motorcycle, and the keys to his motorcycle or to his motorcycle, the keys to his car. Um, a lot of people are acting like the keys being found in a different place than the car is very, very suspicious to them and makes them think that whoever had the keys may have done something. But it's my understanding that the last several times that he had been seen, he was seen riding in the car of someone else. So it's not surprising to me that his keys were actually found someplace else. Another town he may have been in last is reported to have been Eagle Rock, Missouri. If he was in Clifty, Arkansas and went to Eagle Rock, Missouri, he had to go through Eureka Springs, Arkansas to get to Missouri. I grew up in Northwest Arkansas and lived in Clifty for about eight years, so I do know a good deal about this area and it's possible there are other ways that you could get to Eagle Rock, Missouri from Clifty, but the fastest way would be to go through Eureka Springs. <clears throat> take Highway 23 North. I'm just saying. And, um, I lost my place. Oh, yes. Jason is a dad, husband, and brother. He has a son and a stepson who love him dearly. He has numerous friends and family members who are greatly concerned about him. And then this is, I'm kind of, you know, I was going to talk more about that, but I stepped away from it because I noticed, wait, this other poster has a different location for the cross tattoo, the actual cross, not the word cross. Um, a second source says Jay's cross tattoo is actually on his right bicep, which makes more sense to me because of partly of the size of the tattoo. Um... This black cross tattoo is approximately five through six inches tall. This poster um, also states he may have he may have his cell phone with him. There is a ten thousand dollar reward for information leading to his to the whereabouts of Jason Lyrell or his remains. Um, hopefully his whereabouts. And the reward is being offered by a family member. Um, but um, 
they, in order for someone to get the reward, they want the exact address or location of him or his remains. And once he is found, they will pay the reward. Um, <clears throat> Makes me want to mention certain aspects of his life that I have decided not to mention until I'm giving the okay to do so. If you have any information concerning his location or what may have happened to him, please contact the Madison County, Arkansas Sheriff's Office at 479-738-2320. You can also call the tip line for We Help the Missing, WHTM at 866-660-42, I'm sorry, 4025. That number again is 866-660-4025. All family and friends of missing persons deserve closure and knowledge of what happened to their loved ones and where their loved ones are. Um, oh yes, and then I made a note here to make sure to let you guys know that these posters will be posted as a comment once this video is um, posted in my vlog so that you can see the posters and the information about the missing persons. The agencies to contact concerning these two cases, along with their contact information, will also be listed in the blog description section. What you need to do if you find something you think may belong to a missing person or seems to have been abandoned by someone or you think could be remains of a missing person will also be listed there. In these instances, Please leave the item or items in place where you found them, note their location using your coordinates, take pictures, and notify the agency or agencies that are working on that case. He always lets the dog in here, then she hears him doing stuff and wants out. Um, or contact your local authorities, of course. Um, if the item or items are within a U.S. National Park, notify the National Park Investigative Services Branch via their tip line or email. You may call or text their tip line at 888-653-0009. Their email address is, again, nps underscore isb at nps.gov. Um, this does not involve Jason's case unless he perhaps is on the Arkansas Game and Fish Commission land. Uh, and there is a national park also, um, a Hobbs State Park, but I think that's in Benton County. It might, it probably goes over into Madison County also. Um, so they possibly would um, be someone you could contact if those are the cases, um, but primarily Madison County Sheriff's Department for Jason's case. Um, that's all that I have for this episode. Um, thank you all for viewing, subscribing, and sharing my videos, blogs, and channel. I really appreciate each one of you. Um, and I was going to say something about what I intend to do next, but I actually don't really know what I intend to do next for this channel because um, I'm trying not to step too far away from the cold cases in the United States National Parks. But I do need to check on the Kylan Schulte and Crystal Turner stories, or story and see if there's any updates on that, as well as host Clay Calderon's case and see if they have actually made any arrest in his case. Um, that being said, I am going to conclude this video for now. I hope people found this helpful. Um, get the information about these missing people out there so more people know about them. Everyone have a great whatever time of night or day it is in your part of the world. Stay safe and stay positive.